Now that we've looked at homogeneous system solutions, let's take a look at non-homogeneous system solutions. We're going to take a look now at non-homogeneous systems. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have something in the form of AX equals B. Whereas if you'll remember in our last video dealing with homogeneous solutions, we had AX equals zero. And so visually, what this is going to look like is let's say I had my line here that was AX equals zero. Now if I instead have something in the form AX equals B, really what that's going to look like is just a translation of this. So it might be that I've shifted my line down to make it work out to where AX is equal to B. So the reason that this is important is because up to this point, we've been dealing with parametric equations that are in the form either T, V, or we also had a situation where it was, excuse me, that's not a plus, where we had um, T, U plus, um, I don't remember, S, W, I think are the letters that I used. The letters aren't really that important. What is important is we were dealing with some constant times some vector or two constants times two vectors. And so that was the parametric form that we're dealing with. And so what's going to change now is we're still going to be able to write it in that parametric form, but what it's going to look like is a little bit different. We're going to end up with something that looks like P plus, say, TV. And again, this is that same solution as I would have had for a homogeneous solution, and P is going to be whatever my translation is. So of course, it makes much more sense when we actually do this together. And again, I've drawn one with a line. It would be the exact same thing if AX equals zero, the solution set was a plane, it would still just shift the plane B units. So let's look at this one together. And if you'll notice, the coefficient part of my matrix should look familiar because I reused these numbers from example that we did in our last video. But if you'll notice, this is not homogeneous because this um, row, or sorry, column is not zeros. So it is not homogeneous. But the good news is we're going to just do the same steps that we would do when we did this for a homogeneous system. So I still want my first row to remain the same because I want this three to be a pivot. I'm going to add rows one and row two to give me my new row two, which gives me zero, three, zero, six. I'm going to take negative two times row one and add it to row two to give me zero, negative nine, zero, negative 18. From here, I want three to be a pivot, so I need to make negative nine into a zero. So three, five, negative four, seven, zero, three, zero, six. And I'm going to take negative, I'm sorry, positive three times row two to add to row three. So that gives me zero, 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 zero. So again, we can see that X three is free. I'm going to continue with my row operations so that I can get this guy to be a one and then this guy to be a one and this guy to be a zero because of course that's what we want. So first I'm just going to rewrite my zeros down here and I'm going to take, I'm just going to do this in two different steps. I'm going to take a third of this and I'm going to keep this guy the same and then I'm going to take negative five times row two plus row one. So that's still three. Oops, I should go ahead and rewrite these. Otherwise I confuse myself. So negative five times zero plus three is three. Negative five times one plus positive five is zero. Negative five times zero is zero plus negative four. And negative five times two is negative 10 plus seven is negative three. So far, I like what I'm seeing, and 
the last thing I want to do to make this just a little bit prettier is to just take a third of row one. So this is one, zero, negative four thirds, negative one. This guy remains the same, and this guy remains the same. So this is where we are now, and we can see this looks very familiar. The only difference here is the fact that these guys aren't all zeros, and before they were all zeros. So how is this going to change what I do next? Well, remember before I wrote this as x1, x2, x3, and that's really what I'm going to do again. So this guy is x1 minus 4 thirds x, let me just go ahead and write that before I get into my matrices, just to make sure we don't have any misunderstandings. So my solution, wow, <laughs> my solution set is x1 minus 4 thirds x3 equals negative 1. I've got x2 equals 2. I've got x3 is free. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to write that in a different format. x1, x2, x3. So x1, if I rearranged this, would be negative 1 plus 4 thirds x3. x2 is 2 x3 is just x3. So that's where I stand right now, is this is my solution. And what I want to do is I want to write this, and I hopefully don't run out of room here, I want to write this in two different vectors. I'm going to have my negative one and my positive two and notice there's nothing else here, so that's essentially zero. And then my other matrix is going to have an x3, so all of the x3 terms. So I'm going to factor the x3 out, and so that's going to give me 4 thirds, nothing here, so that's a zero, and then a one. And so again, did I write this in the format that I wanted? Well, if you'll recall, in my last slide, we talked about that we wanted x to be p plus tv. And did I accomplish that? Well, this is p, and that's my translation. This is t, and this is v. So I did accomplish it. I wrote it in the format that I wanted. And again, p is simply the translation of our homogeneous solution of TV. Here's a practice for you to try on your own, so go ahead and give it a shot. When you are done, press play to see how you did. As you can see, this is a non-parametric equation because I don't have all zeros here. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we did last time with those row operations. Again, I've got a pivot here of one, and so I want everything below that pivot to be zero. And so I'm going to take negative two times that first row and add it to my second row. So that's going to give me zero, negative nine, positive 18, and positive nine. And now I want this guy to be my pivot. And so again, I'm looking for reduced row echelon form. So I'm going to take everything times negative one ninth. That's going to, sorry, not everything. I'm going to take row two times negative one ninth. Row one, I would not do that to. This gives me zero, positive one, negative two, negative one. From here, I'm trying to then turn, um, let me find a different color, this guy into a zero because I want anything above or below a pivot to be zero. So I'm going to take negative four times row two and add it to row one. So this guy, I'm going to just leave alone and negative four times zero plus one is one. Negative four times one plus four is zero. Negative four times negative two is eight, plus negative five is three. Negative four times negative one is positive four plus zero. 
So that's where I stand now. From here, keep in mind what this is telling me. I have x1 plus 3x3 is equal to 4, and x2 minus 2x3 is equal to negative 1. And if I want to write this in the proper format, I'm going to just rearrange this so that x1 is 4 minus 3x3, x2 is negative 1 plus 2x3. So my solution, again, written x1, x2, x3, because obviously there are three x's, would be that x1 is equal to 4 minus 3x3, x2 is equal to negative 1 plus 2x3, and x3 is obviously free. Just as I did last time, I can take this to the next step and write it as two different matrices or um, vectors. This would be 0. And then all of these guys have an x3, which would be negative 3, positive 2, and 1. And now this is in the proper format that I wanted because this is P, which is my um, translation, and then this is T, U, or V, or whichever letter you want. So it is in the proper format that I was looking for.